In this video, let's talk about the basic syntax of writing multi-threading program. So let's go into Visual Studio. Visual Studio I'm having is Visual Studio 2022, and .NET Framework that means I have is .NET 8. So let's create a new application, or let's say a new project, and we're gonna select the console application language is C sharp, and click on Next button, and we're gonna call this basic syntax. Click on Next, Framework .NET 8, and click on the Create button. The whole purpose of creating any application is to perform a task. In this very, very simple application, there's only one task this program completes, which is to output the words Hello World Console. And to perform any tasks, usually we use a function or a method. In this case, we didn't write any custom functions or custom method. We're using console.write, which is a method that comes from the .NET framework. So let's create a method ourselves in order to perform a task. And I'm going to call this method write thread ID. So it's a very simple task that all it does is to output the current thread ID. I'm going to write it to a line on the console. And in order to output the thread ID, we're going to use the thread dot current thread dot manage ID. We don't need to add one to it. So this is thread ID. We need to remove one of the parentheses. And now we have a method here. This method perform a very simple task. Of course, in your real world scenario, you have way complicated tasks to perform other than just output the manage ID of the thread. But in this case, it suffice to illustrate the concept. So we have a method here that perform a task. And when we want to actually perform the task, we want to invoke this method. We invoke it this way. And if we run it, well, actually, Let's also do a console it line so that we don't just directly exit the program. Okay, let's run the application now. And now you see we have hello world, which is the first task that is performed. I forgot to remove that. And then we have this number one that's written now. So this is the ID of the main thread of this application. Well, let's remove this before we forget. Okay, so we have this task that is performed by the main thread, which is why the thread ID is number one. So in this course, we're talking about multi threading, right? So in order to start another thread, we're gonna use the thread class. So what we are going to do is we're gonna say thread dot, let's say we call it thread one, and then we're gonna just create a new thread and then within the constructor here you can see that we have different signatures and all of them takes at least a delegate so if you read this start is a delegate that represents the methods to be invoked when the thread begins executing which means that we are assigning a task to the thread a thread wouldn't run without doing anything Right. There's a reason why a thread runs because it needs to perform a task. So we assign a C sharp delegate, which is basically a name of the function or the name of the method. In this case, we only have one, which is the red thread ID. So we are going to say that we're going to start a new thread, and all this thread does is to write a thread ID. Again, it's not realistic, but it suffices the purpose of demonstrating the basic syntax of starting a thread, okay? So starting a thread, you declare the thread, you assign a task to the thread, and then now you're gonna say thread1.start. So this is where you actually kick off the processing of this task in this new thread. Okay, so now let's comment out this red thread. So we're not going to actually invoke this within the main thread. We are only going to invoke it within a separate thread. And now let's see what is the thread ID. Let's run the application. Now you can see that the thread ID is number seven. So this is the same method that was called by the main thread, but now it's outputting number seven instead of number one. So that means this thread ID that is written here, which is the current thread, is the new thread 
instead of the main thread. So what if I am running this thread ID from the main thread and from a separate thread at the same time? So let's give it a try. Now you can see that the main thread still outputs number one and then a separate thread. There are different thread, whether this thread ID is eight or seven or 28 or 108, it doesn't really matter. It's assigned by the operating system. But this example shows us the basic syntax starting a thread. You declare a thread class, assign a task to the thread, and then you start the thread. Now let's perform a slightly more realistic task. Let's say that instead of writing this ID out just once, we want to write the ID out for a hundred times. So we are going to create a loop and it's going to loop from 0 to 99. It doesn't really matter whether it's from 1 to 100 or from 0 to 99. The point is that we're writing out the same stuff 100 times. Okay, and again, let's comment out this. And now let's start another thread. So don't worry about the main thread. Let's start another thread. And how do we do it? Remember, create a new thread. Let's call it thread 2 and then assign a task to it, which is the same task. We're going to write the thread ID and then we're going to say thread number two, start. And when this line runs and this line runs, that means we have two threads that runs at the same time. And it's up to the thread scheduler to determine who's going to take which core of the CPU or are they going to take turns? We are going to find out. Let's run the application. Okay. So in this case, you can see that thread number eight finished and then thread number seven started. But it may not be this case all the time because this time the thread scheduler is prioritizing one of the threads. But sometimes it may not be the case. Let's run it again. And this time it's different. You can see. So I scroll all the way to the top. Number seven at the, at the top and then switch to number eight. And now if we scroll down, now we switch to number seven again, and then it finishes. Okay, so last time it was number eight for a hundred times, followed by number seven for a hundred times. This time it started with number seven, but it didn't finish its a hundred times turn. Now it's number eight, and then followed by number seven to complete. And if we run it again, you will see another different results. Scroll up. And this time you can see it start with number eight and finish a hundred times and then number seven. So this is the same as the first time. So the reason why it's repeating this pattern is because a hundred is too fast right? for CPU. 100 loops is not much. So in order to slow it down, we can say thread dot sleep. So sleep 1000 means 1000 milliseconds. That's one second. So that's too long for us. So we don't want to wait for that long. Let's say each iteration, we're going to pause for 50 milliseconds. Then when we run it, we'll see something more interesting because if we slow it down. Then the thread scheduler will have to work harder to pull the threads in and out of the CPU. So let's run the application again. Now you can see something more interesting and it's slower. Of course it's slower. Okay. Finally, I finished writing and you can see that seven, eight, seven, eight, they are alternating, but it's not exactly alternating here. You can see that thread number seven takes the CPU twice, right? And then followed by number eight. Well, I shouldn't say take the CPU twice, but it took a little bit longer time slice. Time, so it has enough time to write twice. Whereas here it's just seven and then eight and seven and then eight. And here number eight took longer time slice and be able to write twice. So we scroll down. It looks like the longest is just twice. So from this example, you have seen the thread scheduler working and don't forget the main thread is also thread. So if we invoke the right thread ID here. That means we have total three threads running in parallel. And if we run this again, we're going to see something completely different. We're going to see number one is being written how many times? 100 times. And then followed by 10, 11 alternating. Why is that? Because right thread ID here is in the main thread. It is blocking. 
So this has to be completed before these two threads can start. Right? That's why you see number one being written by a hundred times, and then these threads start. When these threads start, these threads are not blocking. Right? So this is the nature of using threads. Threads are not locking. So if we move these four lines of code above the main thread, then things will be different. Now you can see that we have the three different threads alternating. We have seven, eight, one, seven, one, eight, seven. There's no particular pattern in this. Sometimes it taking longer time slice. Here the main thread be able to write it twice. From this example, you are able to see that the thread scheduler is working to assign different threads within the application into the CPU. And again, the thread scheduler is part of the operating system. Whether it's going to favor this one or this one or the main thread, we don't know. In order to influence it, we have some ways. For example, we can use the priority. Now, before the thread starts, move this line downwards. Okay. And then move this line up. So here, if we say that thread number one and its priority is the highest. Well, first of all, let's take a look at what priority we have here. We have above normal, below normal, highest, lowest, and normal. So five different levels. If we say threat one is the highest and threat two, let's say threat two is the lowest. And the main thread, how do we let it know? So we're going to say thread dot current thread. So this is the main thread dot priority. Let's say this one is normal. And let's run the application and remove the thread dot sleep because it's going to affect the algorithm of the thread scheduler. So let's comment it out for now and let's run the application. Now you can see number seven starts first because number seven is thread number one. Oh, so, sorry, I need to scroll up. It's not number seven, it's number eight. Number eight is thread one. So number eight finishes and then number one. So this is the main thread and then followed by number seven. So number seven is the lowest. Thread number two is number seven. Thread number one is number eight, and the main thread is number one. Right, so you can see that the priority actually influences the order. Now, like I mentioned in the previous video, that the thread scheduler's algorithm has many factors. The priority is just one of them. Uh, the time slicing is another one. So even though you have the priorities assigned like this, each time the work takes too long time, let's say that we have this each time it takes 50 milliseconds here. Now, the result wouldn't be the same. So let's run the application to see what happens. Okay, so we have this running and it's still running. Let's wait for it to finish. Scroll all the way up. And you can see that this is very similar to what we have seen before. Each thread, we have three different threads taking turns and there's no particular pattern. Why is that? why this is the highest, this is lowest, and this is normal. And it seems that they're not actually affecting the sequence. Well, it's really just because the task itself, each time it performs it, it takes just too long time to finish. So the thread scheduler will have to kick it out of the CPU. What the priority of the thread is, it doesn't really matter. So even you can assign the highest to your own thread, you're not going to have to turn because you're too slow. Before we finish this video, I also want to show you that a thread can have a name. So we have thread.name and you can call it thread1. You can give thread2 a name and then we can have the main thread, which is thread.current.name and we can call it the main thread. So now instead of writing out the ID, let's just write current thread's name. So this would be more meaningful at least. So let's write. And you can see that they're alternating because the task itself to perform in this thread is just taking too long time. So we have the names being written out like that. All right, so this is the basic syntax of kicking off a thread. You declare a thread, assign it a task, and then just call start. Then it will start the thread. And it will not be blocking. That's the nature of a thread. Whereas if you perform the task without running in a separate thread, you are going to block the current thread. In this case, the current thread is the main thread. That's why this line will not execute before this task is finished. 
And that's everything I want to cover in this video. If any questions, please let me know. If not, I will see you in the next one.